Okay. Greetings and welcome to the Regal UVantage webinar, Ma Effectively Manage Airborne Pathogens with the Gentech UVantage Air Treatment System for HVAC. We're glad you're able to spend a little bit of time with us today uh, to go through this. So um, I'm Ian Rubin. I am the moderator for this. I'm the Director of Customer Experience for Regal. Uh, and with us is our presenter, uh, Scott Travers. I'll let Scott introduce himself. Yeah, hello everyone. I am the, the product manager of General Industries Climate Division. Um, so, so I help uh, monitor over the EC motors and, and blower program. Okay. And then we have Audie Cash is with us. He is the VP General Manager of HVAC and Combustion. Uh, and then Roger Becerra is our Director of Technology. And Mike Smith will be joining us shortly as our technology director, ready to answer questions that you have. So again, as we go, feel free to enter those questions in the Q&A. We'll keep an eye on that. I may interrupt Scott uh, and have him answer the questions if it's specific to a slide. If not, we'll wait till the end and answer some of those questions. So Scott, ha hand it over to you and let you get going. All right, I think we're gonna start off with our first polling question, so warm up round. Uh, where, where in the world are you located? So uh, if you could answer that question for us, give us some, some insights as to, to whereabouts uh, on the globe that you are, and, and uh, that'll get us started. So, so, re so regardless of where you're at, uh, inevitably you have all heard uh, of the challenges with indoor air quality and trying to keep people safe, uh, especially in, in with the COVID virus uh, running rampant out there. Um, so, so what we like to talk to today is, you know, what are some of those industry challenges uh, with providing uh, quality indoor air, and, you know, what are some of the uh, solutions that Regal has? So, so we've got some exciting new developments uh, in primary our our Uvantage blower technology that we share with you, and uh, maybe review some some of the technical considerations uh, with that particular blower system. And then at the end, like uh, Ian was saying, we'll have some, some time for you to, to ask some more uh, deeper questions uh, to our technical team. So, so indoor quality, uh, indoor air quality, I should say, you know, it's, it's kind of a well-known fact uh, published by H ASHRAE and CDC uh, that COVID as well as other viruses, you know, spread naturally through, through the air in a building. Uh, so the more we're confined to indoor spaces, uh, the more extreme that, that gets. And uh, also no surprise that improving ventilation uh, helps reduce distribution and exposure of, of those uh, particular bacterias. Um, so, so how do you combat that? You know, so ASHRAE, CDC, and, and EPA have all come up with uh, recommendations. Uh, it all really evol evolves around a layered approach. So, so what do we mean by a layered approach? You know, that could be anything from increasing fresh air ventilation to, to improving filtration. Uh, to, to the number three, which we'll talk more about, uh, ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, uh, obviously social distancing and wearing masks, quarantine and isolation, and on down through to, uh, you know, how do you run your equipment uh, prior to people being in the building, while they're in the building. So, so we're changing our methods of, of, you know, when we're running this equipment, maybe not so much focused on energy savings right now, uh, more focused on trying to keep people safe. So, it's really no no one shot wins wins the game. It's really a combination of things uh, that is ultimately going to keep the indoor air quality uh, clean uh, and, and safer for people to inhabit the the space. So first first big poll question here. So what what are the challenges uh, you're facing with improving indoor air quality uh, and trying to to reduce the spread of the viruses? So we'll, we'll give you a few seconds there if you could answer that question for us real quick. So Scott, while they're answering the poll question, you know, it's really interesting when you're talking about the multi-tiered approach, one size really doesn't fit all when you're thinking about air quality. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And what we're seeing out there in the industry is that, uh, you know, in some cases, uh, filtration is easy to do or, or ventilation, uh, upgrading the ventilation system is easy. In other cases, it's not. And, and so we, we want to try to provide a, yet another tool in the toolbox uh, with our, our blower system with UVC lighting uh, to try to help uh, give more 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 uh, ammo to to the battle. Yeah. So it looks like you know people are still voting, but 
the fresh air ventilation requirements is leading right now with the good mix of you know A and B. So um, almost I wouldn't call it 25% each, but you got a definitely good mix, a little bit leaning towards fresh air ventilation. So I'll end the poll sure, in great. another minute or so, and they'll be able to see those results. Okay, great. So, so appreciate that feedback. Uh, no, no surprises there. So uh, always interesting to see what, what customers have to say there. So, you know, I want to talk real quick about uh, industry challenges, you know, whether you're trying to increase filtration, uh, take, take more uh, fresh air in from the outside. Uh, all of those things come at a cost, right? So, so if you increase filtration, uh, you're, you're adding blower watts, uh, you may be reducing your airflow and hence, you know, hurting your heating and cooling capacity. Uh, potentially higher higher noises uh, because of, of span speeds going up. Uh, you know, in some cases, bringing in more air in, in, in some units, there there is no uh, avenue for for adding a, a ventilator package. Um, so so there's some challenges there with with spacing or or you know retrofitability of, of those packages uh, as as the polling question kind of indicated a little bit. <laughs> and then challenges with installation again. You know, ventilation equipment uh, is big. It's costly. Uh, where do you put it? You know, do you put ventilator fans in, in the walls? So, so there's a lot of challenges with that. So what I would like to do is talk to uh, one of the, the latest uh, devices that we have um, to, to help uh, hopefully alleviate some of those challenges and, and solve some of those problems. So what, what we're going to be talking about primarily today is the U-Vantage uh, blower system. So it basically incorporates our Dexstar blower, and we have added a UVC uh, package to it inside the blower system so so that uh, we can effectively uh, neutralize or, or sterilize uh, the bacteria that, that pass through that blower system. Uh, you'll see some motors over to the right. You know, I also want to bring up, uh, we do have some, some other motors. We'll talk a bit uh, in the future on this um, to, to solve some of the other challenges that we mentioned above as well. But primary focus today will be about our, our new and exciting technology here with UVantage. So I'm going to go ahead and have uh, Ian share a little video here with you of the U-Vantage blower and how it works and what it's all about. Indoor air quality has never been a higher priority than it is right now. Whether it is this pandemic or the seasonal flu, we spend 90% of our time indoors. It's where we live, work, and learn. Unfortunately, indoors is where airborne pathogens find their hosts, us. Introducing U-Vantage. Regal's UVantage indoor air quality technology is answering the call for an effective, efficient, and safe indoor environment. Works seamlessly with existing HVAC systems to sterilize the airstream, reducing active pathogens. Draws less than 40 watts of energy with reliable, long-life LEDs, cleaning air only when moving. Built into the blower so there is no harmful exposure to UVC light removes up to 99% of airborne pathogens in common applications. No other IAQ technology is as impactful or efficient as UVantage, making it the intelligent choice for dramatically improving the indoor air we breathe. So, so great video kind of gives you an overview of uh, what we've got going on with our, our blower. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about the details around it. All right, so so UVC, let, let's talk a little bit about that and the history of UV lighting in general. So, uh, you know, nothing new. Uh, UVC has been studied since the 1800s and, you know, its effect on uh, reducing viruses or neutralizing uh, the viruses. Um, so, so early studies uh, showed clear back to 1955 uh, is, is when a lot of work was done uh, by Wells and Riley, uh, shows that, that UVC is, is proven to be the most effective, uh, in particular at a wavelength of 270 newton meters. Um, that's the most effective uh, UVC uh, capability for sterilizing pathogens, not, not killing them, but, but sterilizing them and, and making them incapable of reproducing. So. Um, you know, that, that's one of the reasons why we've, we've optimized around this technology. Uh, it is by far the most effective way to, to neutralize uh, the pathogens. So, so talking about that, you know, again, we're, we're, we're talking multi-layered multi or multi-tiered approaches. 
you know, you've got the UVC and, you know, obviously different uh, viruses require different dosages, if you will, of the UVC lighting. So, so here we're just showing the, the COVID virus and the inf influenza virus. And obviously you can see the different uh, dosage rates of UVC that would be needed and the reduction rates off to the left. Um, not to be confused with, with filtration. Filtration does, does a nice job with trapping things, uh, getting them out of the airstream. However, they do not sterilize. And that, that's a big difference between the two technologies. Uh, and again, while I think the, the CDC and others are recommending you know, that tiered approach, try, trying to get uh, the optimal uh, sterilization and uh, safety for the air, air quality uh, in the room. So what is our package? So, so you Vantage, you know, uh, as we looked at this, we wanted to try to find a solution to help people out there, help our OEMs, help our end users uh, sterilize and make their, their space uh, safe. Um, so, so we've landed on our, our Dexstar blower technology, which we already had in place. And, you know, we've got the, the, the one package design, if you will. So it's, it's a nice centralized spot that the UVC light is self-contained inside of this blower. Uh, so it's very safe to, to utilize that way. You don't get human exposure in, in that regards. Um, you know, again, we've already mentioned that it's less than 50 watts in operation. Obviously, we recommend that you only run the UVC lighting when the blower is running, um, but all the airflow is passing into that blower system. Uh, so it's a nice central spot to, 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 to start to work on the airflow or the air uh, pathogens in the air and uh, start to get those out. You know, why, why UVC? Well, there's a couple of options. You know, it, it's a low profile design, so it doesn't inter impact the, the airflow. It uh, doesn't really affect the efficiency by that much. And LEDs uh, are, are known to last 10 years or more, depending on, on how they're used in, in this application. But uh, we felt that this was a nice uh, centralized package and a great way to, to approach this problem. And hopefully you'll find it as a valuable tool in, in your, your battle against the COVID uh, out, out in the environments. So we didn't just wanna create a uh, product and then send it out to the field without having some kind of benchmark or test data. So we did go to Intertech and had some testing done. Now note that the pathogen that was used was this uh, Phi X174. And basically in a thousand cubic foot chamber, our blower system was allowed to run. Uh, the, the testing required aerosolized pathogen be pushed into that, that room. And then uh, we ran the blower at 1200 CFM. So basically after one hour, uh, we sterilized that, that bacteria down to uh, not by 99.96%. So, so the active pathogen density uh, basically went from, from 100 down to almost nothing. Uh, so that, that's a great benchmark uh, that we can reference. Now that, that virus is, is similar, but not the COVID virus. So, so let's talk about residential application. And I'm gonna separate residential from commercial because they are slightly different. Um, the reason they're, they're slightly different in, in most uh, residential applications, uh, our air handlers are not equipped with, with fresh air ventilation packages. So uh, what we show here is basically if you're running fan only mode, the 400 CFM versus over to the right, you have it in, in a cooling or heating mode. So you're up at a, a 1200 CFM. So probably like a, a three ton air conditioner. Um, basically, we're showing filter only, which is common. All Most air handlers or all air handlers have some sort of filtration. And then you vantage with filter. So you can see, uh, even at the low airflow, you'll get upwards of, fit, of a 50% reduction uh, in active pathogens within two hours of operation. And then over to the right, you will actually get about 78% uh, reduction in pathogens. Now, you might ask the question on, on the right side, why is it so much different with the higher airflow? Uh, it's all about air changes. So the number of air passes through that, that blower system, uh, just like a filter, the more you pass the air through it, the more it gets filtered. Same is true with the, the UVC lighting. Uh, the more you pass it through or expose it, uh, the, the more effect you're gonna have on, on sterilizing those, those unwanted uh, pathogens. And then, uh, you know, obviously we wanted to talk a little bit about, about the uh, person coming into the space and that person having uh, the COVID virus. So, so this is a simulation uh, that has been done by our engineering team uh, based on the, the Wells-Riley model. We talked about Wells-Riley up, up above on the UVC slide. Um, so very well known, very uh, well respected uh, method for, for predicting uh, infection risks. So, so what we wanted to do, just to kind of baseline it here, it's, it's a 500 square foot residential space. 
Um, we do have, uh, you know, an infected person. So, so this is our, our rates right here for the, the COVID virus. And, you know, one thing I wanted to point out too, CFM, so for, for ventilation airflow, we, we've chosen 26 uh, CFM. You know, there's, there's inevitably going to be some, some leakage, either a window got cracked open or a, a door is open or, or they leak around the seals, right? So there, there's some, some uh, fresh air coming into the building. What, what it shows here, though, is if, if we do nothing, so the baseline is uh, nothing and that person's in the room, your, your rate uh, uh, or chance of being infected after four or five, six hours is, is above 90%. So, so that's not good. Um, obviously, if you do filter only, you know, you reduce it a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, if you do filter and you vantage, again, the layered or tiered approach, uh, you'll get upwards of a 22% reduction in risk factor after just two hours. Um, so, so it's strongly recommended that, that you use kind of a multi-pronged approach to, to this uh, battle, and this just kind of proves it. So, so the U-Vantage, key, key thing here is, is the U-Vantage really helps add that, that extra level of protection. Now, we're not saying only use U-Vantage, we're saying use it in conjunction with these other uh, technologies as well, and you'll get the all optimal results. Uh, U-Vantage really comes into play when, when you can't get that fresh air ventilation, or maybe you can't put a, a stronger filter in. Uh, definitely, Uvantage could could certainly help you then. Uh, so so let's talk briefly about uh, commercial spaces. So so commercial is a little bit different uh, in the fact that they they usually can or or they can modify their their space with fresh air. So um, just wanted to show a chart on, on this one. Again, you know we've got an infected person into the room. Uh, in this particular case, we were studying a classroom, so it's a student. Uh, the space is about 900 square foot. Uh, in this case, we've got about 200 CFM of, of fresh air coming into the space. And, and again, after two hours, uh, you see a reduction of upwards of, of 60% uh, in the second hour when you use U-Vantage in conjunction with filtration and fresh air. So, so a great, great extra uh, security blanket there. And again, using that, that multi-tiered approach uh, with, with the different uh, technologies out there to, to optimize your uh, cleaning of the air. So, so next poll question here. So, so how are you improving air, indoor air quality to, to meet the recommended level of ventilation, filtration based on the latest industry guidelines and recommendations? So, so looking for a little feedback there as well. All right, the poll is there, so hopefully everybody can see it. So you know, a lot of the testing looks like um, you know, you're, you're infecting the area and then measuring you know, how well the system's working. Um, you know, any, you know, what's interesting looking at the, your information you shared on the uh, the classroom, you know, it seemed like a good decrease and especially with COVID with everybody was in school, masks were mandated, people were separated. So it definitely looks like it would provide some additional help, you know, not 100% in the classroom, but it definitely contributes to a, a good, improvement to uh, eliminating or reducing the pathogen. Absolutely. And, and again, you know, when used in conjunction with the other devices, uh, you know, in some cases, even when with fresh air ventilation, it, obviously, if it's, it's real cold outside or real hot outside, uh, it, it's not real good to bring in that, that air to the conditioned space. It makes the overall air conditioning system work harder. Uh, you know, uses up a lot more energy. So, so hopefully, maybe using the, the UV uh, lower system, the Uvantage lower system, uh, you can reduce some of that that need for the fresh air ventilation, uh, take some of that load off, and, and kind of keep or maintain or regain, in some cases, your efficiency. And you know, this blower system also has the advantage of the uh, improved efficiency because of the Dextar blower. Um, so, if you did put a, a larger filter in there or a better filtration system. Um, you can regain some of your airflow slash also uh, save some of your watts that you might have otherwise lost in the blower system. Yeah, no, it's actually real interesting because thinking if you're in, in the heat, you're going to have your pulling in hot air and your system's going to be working harder. Or if you're you know, in Canada or where it's cold, you're going to be pulling out cold air. So it's a good balance and, and kind of that multi-tiered approach you talked about. It looks like majority are saying A, B, and C. It's 64% and 27% are C, so field installing. So it's you know heavily those first three, uh, a few others. So we'll end the poll and we'll let you keep going.
All right, great, great, great feedback. Not not surprising there either. All right, so so talking about that, so you know we we we've talked a lot about the U Vantage, and we'll continue to talk about that. But I did want to share just briefly. Uh, I've already touched on it. Uh, when you're going to, to increase filtration, uh, you know obviously you you increase your internal static pressure. Uh, you run the risk of losing airflow, and if you if you lose the airflow, as we all know, uh, you lose the cooling and heating capacity of the unit. So uh, in a lot of cases, if you have PSC motors, you need to change it over to, to ECM motors. Um, so I just want to make people aware again that that we do have that technology, and at the very least, uh, that might be something that you might be able to use to help uh, improve your system. Uh, as far as any lost watch you may have or, or just regaining that airflow that you lost because of the heavier uh, filtration system. And then if you're already using ECM motor technology, uh, obviously we've got the bump up to the Dexstar. Um, so, so again, there's, there's tools out there that we can do to help overcome some of the losses that you're incurring uh, because of the increased filtration, uh, you know, the, the extra workload on the air conditioning system because of the extra heating load. Uh, we can help uh, save some of those watts by by some of these other technologies as well, and of course the the Dexstar is is the blower system that's used in the Uvantage, uh, so so you get the the watt savings and, and extra airflow all built into to the one unit. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about the the technology behind it. So uh, as I've mentioned before, I'm not going to read through this whole slide, but uh, many of the models and the simulations we see here in this this presentation. Um, we're based off of the Wells Riley model, um, so so obviously you can research that. Uh, we'd, we'd be glad to help uh, show you some of our research information there. Um, making comparisons, so so the the technologies out there, you know, we all know about the the Merv 13 uh, HEPA filter if you can fit it. Obviously, a more costly filter sometimes requires pre pre filters to be with it. Um, you know, the downside of those filters, as we've mentioned, you know, increases static pressure, makes the blower work harder, makes it spin faster, it can be a little bit noisier. Um, filters trap the, the, the pathogens, um, but they have to re be replaced every month, every three months, depending on, on the situation. Um, so, so very effective. However, you know, there, there's some downsides to it or challenges to it. Uh, ionizers, on the other hand, you know, this is one where, again, it doesn't sterilize. Uh, the pathogen maybe weighs it down, uh, makes it want to fall to the floor, makes it bigger so it, it gets caught in, in a lesser filter system. Uh, in some cases, unfortunately, there is some ozone being discharged from these ionizers or created by it. Uh, so, so not necessarily the ideal situation there. Um, I, I will say here in, in recent weeks, I have heard situations where uh, the ionizers are not, not interacting properly with controls. So we, we don't know if they're uh, inducing some sort of electrical, false electrical signal, but uh, be aware of that as well, that there's some challenges that could be there if, if not properly uh, uh, designed for. Uh, UV lamps, uh, mercury, you know, we all know about this technology, been around for years. Um, obviously, they can be very fragile in shipment. Um, the, the big thing with these, though, is they, they run hot, uh, they run higher watts, and technically, they, they really need to be replaced about every year and a half to, to three years. Uh, depending on the application. So uh, while they don't produce noise or, or any of the, the uh, a whole lot of ozone, I guess in some cases they can, um, still not, not the optimal. And, and that's kind of why we've gone with UVC LED technology. Uh, it's efficient, it's low profile, uh, has a longer life, as we've said, it, it could last upwards of 10 years. Uh, not really as sensitive to, to the temperature, whether it's on the the downside of the evaporator coil or if it's in, in, in the warm side. And uh, we, we really feel like it's, it's the technology of the future and have seen a lot of good things out of it. Uh, certainly it's, it's a very nice compact design and uh, works very well compared to the others. So again, you know, try and try to make some, some fair comparisons. You know, we, we put an ionizer together uh, with our U-Vantage technology to, to, to see how they work together or not together, but uh, in, in, uh, in the same, same environment. So again, we use the, the Phi X174 pathogen. Uh, you can see the ionizer up top is the I-Wave R ionizer. Uh, basically after one hour of runtime, uh, the pathogen was reduced by 90.6%. Uh, the Uvantage uh, got it down to 99.96%, as we had said before. And this is the same testing uh, that was done in a, a few slides ago. And then by the time you get to two-hour reduction, the ionizer starts to, to catch up a little bit. 
Um, but the Uvantage still, it, it's, it's basically uh, taking care of that, that virus and, and gotten the majority of it out of there. You know, the other thing is the, the expected life of an ionizer, you know, it's a little bit better than, than the old tube, uh, tube technology for, for maybe UV lamps. Uh, two to five year warranties is really where you're sitting at. So, so again, uh, you're still going to have to get in after a couple of years and, and replace it, maintain it some way or shape or form. Uh, versus the UVC LED technology, again, it's 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 mature technology and it, it'll last uh, uh, several years more than that. So then, talking briefly about UVC mercury tubes, uh, I've mentioned most of this already. Uh, you know, two to three years at, at best uh, operation lifetime. I would say even after a couple years that they start to degrade uh, in their their uh, intensity, if you will, and start to lose their effectiveness. Uh, in particular, too, they're, they're sensitive to the, the environment or the temperature that they're working in. Um, so maybe not the optimal situation when they're downstream of an evaporator coil. Um, and they also produce a lot of heat, which is not something you want to do, especially when you're cooling. Um, so, so some downsides to it. That they're effective at what they do. Um, they're just not necessarily as efficient uh, and long-term reliable as, as the UVC technology that, that we're incorporating. So one of the last things I want to talk about, so, so people hear UVC and they start thinking of, of safety concerns. So, so just to, to rehash this real quick, uh, three different types of, of UV lighting out there, UVA, UVB, and UVC. Uh, UVA and UVB being what we typically see in, in, in the sunlight, uh, what causes our sunburns and damage to, to things in, in, that are exposed to it. Uh, UVC can, can still impact uh, the human skin and eyes, uh, more of an irritant, um, not as bad maybe as UVA and UVB, but still some, some cautions or concerns uh, should be there. So, so we don't want direct exposure to this light. Uh, so we ask that, that people use care when, when using it. Uh, certainly we, we, we had anticipate adequate warning labels. We'll be having warning labels on our blower system, um, but warning labels onto your unit and disconnects such that uh, even if a technician went to, to maintain that unit, that they would be protected because it would automatically shut off. And then uh, another note, you know, UVC with wavelengths below 240 nanometers uh, will tend to create ozone. Uh, so, so just to note, um, our system is based off of 275 nanometers, uh, which is uh, not only the most effective point for killing pathogens, uh, but stays away from, from that uh, ozone uh, producing a wavelength as well. So uh, lot, lots to be done on uh, making sure that we're, we're keeping people safe. Uh, again, UVC being the, the least uh, concern over all the, the UV lighting. And then of course, we've, we've got a, a Regal uh, UVC white paper that uh, Audi Cash and team have put together. Uh, we'll have that for your reference uh, along with this presentation. And uh, certainly if you have more questions, have more interest in this product, I would encourage you to, to reach out to us, be it uh, through our website. Uh, if you have a known salesperson, please reach out to them. And we'd be happy to set up a, a more one-on-one -on -one type webinar uh, to discuss your needs and maybe your questions uh, in more detail uh, on this uh, Uvantage blower system. So, so with that said, uh, I appreciate everybody's time today. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and, and go over to our panels of experts and see if anybody has some some technical questions for them. Yeah, we did get one question came in, um, and don't forget you could go to Q and A. And we do have a few questions that have come up in some of the prior training sessions that we'll go through. But um, how does Uvantage attack mold generation in the system, and how does it compare with other IAQ technologies? So I don't know if Mike, you want to have information on that one. Sure. You know, regarding uh, mold, the uh, this is ultraviolet light, and ultra ultraviolet light is used commercially today for attacking, uh, you know, other uh, molds and pathogens. Uh, it's a matter of uh, of exposure. We've limited uh, the um, escape of UVC by putting it into the blower, um, but uh, anything that's exposed to the uh, airflow, you know, would be um, would be affected by our UVC. So if if mold is present, it's going to be, um, you know, we're going to give it a dose of UVC. Good. Uh, new question just came in. 
Is there any monitoring technology to validate the UVC emissions? Any capability to moderate UVC emissions? Roger, do you want to take that one? Or is that something that we... Yes. Um, well, we... Um, the, the right the equipment to measure radiation. And then we, uh, we actually use the equipment in the laboratory to... Uh, to verify that the intensity provided by the our solution meets the, the requirements. So uh, I don't have the parameter in this with me, but uh, there are equipment available to to do the job. Okay. Yeah, let me let me pile on, um, Ian. Um, we we do have equipment in the laboratory, but we also have equipment in our production lines. So when we're building the blower and putting the UVC module in place. We do um, measure 100% uh, to make sure that we've got the intensity that we're looking for. Next question came in. Given the life of the UV bulb, do we have an effect in this over time? Even though the light's on this, do we lose effectiveness? In regard to the UV bulb, the, the fluorescent bulb? Yeah, given the life of the bulb, is there based do you lose effectiveness over time so if it's running for 12 months is it just as effective 12 months as day one um there is a degradation of the uh, uvc over time um there are um uh, degradation rates that are published but the um uh, one of the primary effects is temperature um, we're putting the uvc in the blower and uh, moving, you know, what is typically uh, room ambient air over the blower, and uh, keeping the U the uh, UVC LEDs very cool. Um, when you contrast that with uh, fluorescent tubes, um, they actually have an optimum temperature range to work into. So it's got to be just warm enough, but not too warm, and uh, sort of not too cold. Um, the uh, intensity falls off rather dramatically. Um, LEDs uh, don't do that. So um, there are life considerations. Um, it does degrade over time, but um, the published data is is, um, is based on uh, an L70 lifetime, so 70% of the effective output. And then, um, Audie, maybe you could answer this one. Is How does the system ensure end users are not exposed to the UVC? I think Scott had talked a little bit about that in the presentation. But um, you know anything specific that? Yeah, I mean, we take safety very seriously, and uh, the the way the system operates uh, that the UVC LEDs are only powered um, when the motor is operating is really critical. Um, and so, you know, service technicians or anyone approaching, whether it's a furnace or an air handler, often the interlock disconnects power uh, to the motor, and therefore would disconnect power to the uh, to the UVC as well. That's really important, um, and that's that that ensures uh, safety and no accidental exposure. In addition, there's um, there's ample labeling and an indication that UVC could be present when operating, and we expect people to take appropriate precautions. And one last thing, when it comes to UVC, especially in the tighter wavelengths that we're talking about here, um, the the primary risk is actually um, do, it could could cause uh, some reddening of the skin um, and potential, um, you know, I'd say uh, redness or, or uh, spotting um, of your vision. But those have been shown to be pretty temporary. UVC LED, UVC uh, light does not penetrate the skin like UVA and UVB, so we're not going to create sunburns. Um, so really, the three layers: a, it's a, a relatively safe range of UV, followed by uh, ample warnings, and ultimately. Uh, disconnected power uh, when servicing, we feel like is a very safe um, arrangement for uh, deploying this technology in the field. Good, good to know. That's yeah, definitely interesting on the effect to the skin that it's uh, a lot different because you hear a lot in the news about different UV ratings. Um, Mike, another question, follow up, I think, to your answer is you, you mentioned 10 year life. You know, what's an hour rating of the bulb? I mean, if, and especially if it's not running all the time to get an estimate of how long, um, you know, it could run without needing to be replaced before you lose that effectiveness. Well, we can provide information on the life, life but um, it's, it's based on numerous factors. 
So, you know, it depends on the temperature, obviously the life hours. Um, you know, if you're operating on the high, hot side, uh, you know, at the discharge of a furnace, it's much different than if you're operating on the um, uh, discharge of uh, an air conditioning system, it's much cooler. Um, you know, we, you know, the 10 the year life that we've provided is based on typical uh, residential installations. So if somebody has a specific requirement that they'd like to, you know, like us to speak to, you know, um, offline, um, we can do that. So, you know, I would say reach out, you know, reach out to us, let us know what your application is, and we can see if we can help you with those numbers. Okay. So, yeah, every situation is a little bit different. Um, so that does make sense. So you have the tools to answer those questions. Okay. Yes, we do. You know, Roger, the question, looking at another question we've had is, um, you know, that came up the last time when we talked was, you know, the MERV filters trap the pathogens, but don't necessarily sterilize versus the UV lighting. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. That's correct. Um, um, filters trap, uh, but the, the pathogen is still, is still there, and they're still there for long period of time. Um, UV, on the other hand, is um, destroys the the molecular structure, destroys the DNA, so it prevents reproduction of the of the pathogen. And then, um, what about the efficiency? I know Scott touched on this a little bit, but if you just install running your system today, and then you install the the Uvantage, is there any change to the efficiency? Assuming you know, same motor and same pretty much configuration. With there any effect? Uvantage, yeah, with Uvantage, there's no measurable change. The module is really uh, compact, very flat. Um, so there's no impact on efficiency uh, at all with Uvantage. Now, okay. the other filtration, um, very few people use, um, you know, good MER filters. Um, most residential users um, you know, use very basic filters, so they don't trap nearly as much. They're not as tight. Um, uh, you know, so the, Roger, you know, pointed out that the filters do trap and, and they do up to a point, but, um, uh, adding, you know, adding the higher MER filters or even ultimately the HEPA filters can, uh, really, um, not only hurt the system efficiency, but as Scott was mentioning earlier, uh, ruin the ability of the product to deliver hot or cold air, re reduce the capacity um, dramatically. Okay. And it might follow up for you, uh, you know, when you replace, when do you replace the Uvantage LED modules? You know, it, as you explained, it varies with application, but other benchmarks or recommendations that you might have, or is that the calculator well, there... kind of helps with that? Yeah, there are recommendations that we can provide to customers, but again, it depends on the application. Um, you know, there there are ideal applications, typical residential, um, you know, where the you know the furnace or air conditioning system may only be on for you know two or three hours a day in in total, um, and and then there are systems where you want to run you know maximum power for 24 hours a day. So it really covers a wide gamut, but you know we'd be more than happy to to talk to, uh, to in, you know anyone had any questions and and provide them with that kind of data. From that, then you know we recommend to the OEMs a strategy for replacement. Okay. Now, is the system retrofitable? You know, I have my HVAC system running right now. Is it, is there a way to get it into the residential system that exists today, or do you need to get the entire blower assembly? Well, this presentation is about the entire blower assembly. Okay. Um, you know, you know, if there if if there are places where this can't be used, then that's something that we would we would entertain. Um, you know, the opportunity. You know, um, you know where we've got an OEM that that has a need, um, we would certainly discuss it. All right. Um, Getting close to 45 minutes. We tried to want to keep it at that 45 minute level. So any other got any last minute comments? 
Uh, last minute comment would be, you know, a lot of good questions here, a lot of good feedback. So uh, please feel free to reach out to us again and, and uh, engage the team. We, we'd love the chance to, to speak with you about this uh, product and uh, see how we can help you uh, provide value to, to your end customers and, and keep everybody safe out in the marketplace. So, so thanks for everybody's time today and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Definitely. Thanks, Scott and Mike, Audie and Roger. Um, I know there will be a follow up email just to say thanks for participating. This will be this was recorded. We will uh, do some quick edits from formatting and then it will be available on the RegalBeloit.com website soon. So there'll be uh, an email communication to everybody with that information. So, you know, it's there and you could share it with other people. Um, you know, and thanks for joining us today on your lunch hour or depending on where you are around the world and people over in Europe. Um, and it will communicate as we do more webinars to share some of the great products and information we have. Thanks, everyone.